Wenn das dann machen, nur das und das und das und das. Und das. Okay, guys, so we're out here in Joshua Tree. We're hanging out with Cam, Kofi, Armando, and Evan, who's operating the camera right now. We're gonna be filming the Cybertruck on these Blaze R Remus lenses. Now, I've been actually messing around with these lenses for the past couple of days. And honestly, they've impressed me so much. And what's weird is that they're all sub a thousand dollars, which when you think about Animorph lenses, that's kind of insane. So I really want to play around with these today and, and see what they can do. Yeah, yeah, push down on that, Cam. You're doing great. <laughs> Kofi was trying to do that to me last night. Was it? <laughs> you guys sharing room? Okay, so these Blazer Remus lenses are way cool. We were using the 100 millimeter lens on the car rig setup. We had the 65 millimeter set up on Kofi's FX3, and then I had the 45 millimeter anamorphic setup on the Nikon Z8. Now, all of these are 1.5X anamorphic lenses, which is honestly a nice middle ground. Although I think that these are doing something a little bit extra or special when it comes to how they are applying the anamorphic or distorting the image in order to get more character out of the image. When talking to Cam, he seems to think that they're doing something special to make it feel a little bit more like a 2X anamorphic when it comes to the sides of your image, which is really cool. Now, the sides of your image are definitely a little extra distorted. If you had a person at the edge of your frame, they do tend to skew and look a little funky. However, a lot of that can be fixed in post-production in DaVinci Resolve. So maybe that's not too much of an issue, although you do lose a little bit of field of view when you fix that distortion issue. But again, these are very affordable anamorphic. So a lot of these issues can kind of be forgiven, especially for the character and the look that you're able to achieve with these lenses. I mean, just look at some of this footage. It looks honestly incredible. Now there is another issue when you're all the way open at T2, you do have a lot of chromatic aberration as well as some other issues. However, if you do go down to T2.8, a lot of that is fixed. So maybe consider if you get these lenses, don't always shoot wide open. If you're okay with some of the issues, go ahead and open it up to T2. But if that is a problem for you, 2.8 seems to be the fix. Now, one of the best things about these lenses is how small and compact they are. I was rocking this on the Nikon Z8 handheld with the LiDAR Focus Pro grip from DJI. And honestly, I feel like this is the perfect handheld setup when it comes to shooting these anamorphic lenses. It never felt like it got too heavy. And then additionally, because we were using that LiDAR our Focus Pro grip. I didn't even have to worry about focus, which definitely felt like cheating because that system works so well. If you want to see a video about that, I'll have one coming out pretty soon. Or of course, you can always go check out Cam Mackey or Kofi's videos. They'll have videos as well. Now with these Blazar Remus lenses, you have two different types of anamorphic flares that you can choose from. You have the blue flare, which hopefully I'm demoing for you guys pretty well right now. That's the flaring that we had on all the lenses on set, but you can also get an amber flare if that is more your style. Now, this was my first venture into using anamorphic lenses, and honestly, I'm kind of hooked now. I'm hoping to get a set of these myself pretty soon, but Kofi has actually used anamorphic lenses, a variety of different anamorphic lenses over the years, and so I wanted to get his thoughts on how these Blazar Remus lenses compare to other anamorphic lenses he's used. Uh, so I've been using the Blazars for the same amount of time as everybody else has in this video, but using the Blazar anamorphic lenses, they feel a little bit different. I've used other anamorphics in the past, and what it quite honestly felt like was just modern day lenses, a lot of clinically sharp lenses, with anamorphic kind of filters in the back of it to give it that flaring look. It didn't necessarily have some of the qualities like the bokeh and distortion that you might have looked for from true anamorphic lenses, which before the Blazars you had to pay a lot more money for. With this set of lenses, you get to save a ton of money on getting the anamorphic look, but you actually still get that character. These lenses aren't going to be perfectly sharp and perfectly clinically clean. And I think in a lot of ways, that's actually kind of a good thing. If you want to get clinically clean lenses and put anamorphic filters on them, you can go ahead and do that. But if you're looking for cinema lenses that have a little bit of charm and character, and as well as a lot of those anamorphic qualities, I think the Blazars are a good pickup. Okay guys, so we had a ton of fun shooting with those Blazar Remus lenses. In fact, we're filming on one right now with the Komodo X and the Remus 45 millimeter lens. It looks great, but I wanted to tell you guys about what happened at the end of our shoot. So I actually volunteered myself for some reason to be the DIT of the shoot, and we had a ton of different cameras, and I needed to be able to dump all this footage onto my computer. So what I was using were these PGY Tech card reader cases. These things are really cool because not only does it have your cards, whether that's SD cards or CF Express A cards, as well as micro SD cards, you can also get another case that holds your CF Express B cards, but it also has a USB-C cable here so you can plug this into your computer and then it functions as a card reader as well. 
I know a lot of times we can forget our card readers, so it's really nice to have it all in one place just to make it one less thing that you have to remember. And I wasn't the only one using these things. Kofi has them, Armando has them, Cam has them. In fact, this is Armando's Pelican case right here. And we have another one here and here as well. They come in green and they come in black. They also have this nice little spot for a carabiner clip so you can hook this onto your backpack or whatever it is you need. These things are really cool. And if you wanna get one for yourself, I'll have a link down below in the description. I feel like I can't say enough how cool using these anamorphic lenses are. I didn't know that you could get a look quite as cool and interesting as this for the price point that these come at because all three lenses come in right around 2,500 bucks. And from what I understand, we're actually pretty close to NAB. I'm dating this video a little bit. They're actually gonna release a few more of these Blazar lenses. So it's gonna be really cool to test out those lenses hopefully in the future. But this set is actually Cam Mackey's and I wanted to go ahead and talk to him because he's kind of the anamorphic guy when it comes to YouTube. I wanted to see why he loves these Blazars and anamorphic so much. Okay guys, so we've been messing around with these Blazar lenses all day and we've gotten some pretty amazing stuff, especially with the 100 mil of the Cybertruck and Chris really amazing things, but I wanted to go ahead and talk to Cam, who's <laughs> got the X106, but Cam, obviously you're really big into anamorphic lenses. In fact, you're the one who <laughs> is lending me these for this video. I just wanted to ask you why anamorphic specifically, and then why Blazar lenses? So if I'm gonna go on my way to shoot manual focus lenses and not use autofocus, I wanna shoot a lens that's worthwhile. Uh, kind of how Tarantino talks about, like if you're gonna shoot films, it better be shot on film. Uh, same with the anamorphics. Like, if I'm gonna go on my way to shoot something cool, I want to immerse the person into the visuals. For me, I feel like anamorphic just does that. I feel like anamorphic naturally. I feel like anamorphic naturally just kind of makes you feel like, oh, I'm watching a different world. I'm watching someone's story, and it kind of just removes your brain from your own stresses of the life. So, as I get more into like directing stuff, that's like kind of my my pitch on anamorphic. Right. But even for YouTube, even for YouTube stuff, stuff, it's like I'm, if I'm, you know, if we're gonna be you know, creative, let's creative, let's creative. Let's like actually, like do, actually something do something cool with it. Now, when it comes to the Blazar Remus, all the budget affordable anamorphics, they kind of went for more clean, sharp, clinical type things to show quality. Right. But they didn't really get the point of anamorphic. Like now, all of a sudden, it's so new and clean that a lot of like the big DPs they shoot yeah. anamorphic to dirty it up saying, like, and just what immerse saying, you into like, a different you world. Immerse. So <clears throat> the Blazar Remus are the first affordable ones that actually look like those classic vintage Panavision mm -hmm. C anamorphics. And I don't know, it's it's crazy that it's, it's taken this much time and competition for someone just to make something like this. So, and to be honest, these actually aren't like technically great lenses. Like they're not super sharp, wide open. Uh, there's a lot of chromatic aberrations on them. The mm -hmm. edges are all kind of funky. The edges are very soft. There's a stigmatism to it, but for me, I love that, especially when it's going straight to YouTube and you're looking at the little thing. I just want to dress it up a little bit. And what's funny is a lot of people who go and, you know, they might look at this like, oh, what lens was that? It's the same people who are like, oh, I want to get the best clinical lens, mm -hmm. but I want to slap halation on it and post and all this film grain <laughs> and a diffusion filter on it. I'm like, stop buying into the hype and just buy into what you like, what your eye gravitates towards. Mm -hmm. And personally for me, my eye gravitates towards this. Everybody that's here that has set their eyes on these Blazars are like, oh, like that's anamorphic. Oh, like right. that's what it's supposed to look like. So again, Blazar is the first one that has introduced it under this price point of a grand each that has that look. So guys, there's also, Blazar's kind of taken the run of the game here to where there's other manufacturers making similar lenses and the price point that they're putting these is crazy. Uh, bizarre, Blazar bizarre, I don't know, I don't wanna say it. <laughs> yeah. But we now have full frame 2x anamorphics as well um 1.5x might still be better for a lot of you guys if you're shooting 16 by 9 sensors and even if you are shooting open gate 1.5 on open gate you're gonna get really cool vertical usage out of that still they also have a 35 millimeter so we're shooting on a red komodo x over here mm -hmm. that's gonna pair it well with there and that lens is actually tiny but more cleaner than these current uh blazar remus so you know there's a lot of options if you're someone that again if you're like oh these are too dirty, like wide open. Just because the lens is at T2 does not fucking mean you shit T2. Close that bitch down. Especially <laughs> when you're shooting anamorphic, there's so much character. It's almost too yep. much character, too much separation. Because you're not just getting bokeh, you're getting uh, that anamorphic squeeze. It's like right. it's 4X, the, the physics on it's weird. But you're getting way more bokeh out of it. And that's another thing that's cool about anamorphic is you get more natural compression. Right. And you get more of that waterfall textured look. And so at T4, these still look 
great. They still pop your subject off. They give you that 3D pop look. Yeah, and honestly, when I was using these, because I have not shot anamorphic before, when I was using the 45, it's deceptive because you're getting the compression of like a 45 mil portrait lens, but you're getting the width of like a 22 yeah. millimeter lens. It's kind of crazy, so. We've all tried all the other lens brands out there with the affordable anamorphics, and everybody's kind of like, oh, these are cool, and then it kind of fades off. But everyone, when they try these, they're like, oh, mm -hmm. like, whoa. Like, all of a sudden, you see everybody wants to go and film. Everybody's, like, really immersed into it because even just looking through the viewfinder or through your monitor and seeing how beautiful and dreamy and just different worldly they are, it inspires the inner filmmaker. It makes you want to tell a different story. It makes you want to tell a story. So. Yeah, and it doesn't even make sense how good they look or bad, but in a yeah. good way yeah. they look for the price that they are. So guys, these Blazar Remus lenses, we were using the 100, the 65, which is filming us right now, as well as the 45. We got a lot of stuff with Chris yeah. on the 45 the other day. And this footage really does look amazing. There's something like Cam was saying that's larger than life when it comes to these anamorphic lenses. And I'm now I'm kind of hooked. I'm gonna have to start getting into this as well. So thanks Cam for letting me use these. And if you guys wanna see more anamorphic stuff, Cam's the guy, so go check out his channel.